Hi, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to start to work on our backend by uh, creating some of the cloud functions that will give us uh, access to our database and that will give users access to uh, the authentication service, uh, etc. So before we're going to start, uh, I'm going to go over some of the prerequisites that you need to work on this project. So number one is Node.js. Uh, we need this just to use NPM for installing some of the packages. Uh, number two will be VS Code. Now this is optional, but I recommend VS Code. It's the best text editor for me out there. Even A Atom and Sublime are pretty good as well. But some of the extensions of VS Code are really, are really, really good. Uh, number three is Postman. Uh, if you don't have it, download it. We're going to be using this to run uh, API requests to test our API. Um, either Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. All download links are available. Um, I want to show you something on VS Code. Just so that we are on the same page, I will be using bracket pair colorizer, which will uh, color some of the brackets differently. That will make our code easier easier to read. Prettier, which formats the code uh, each time I save, so that we don't have to indent. And ES7, React, Redux, etc. Uh, snippets, which will give us access to some of the snippets that would uh, generate code without without us having to type all of it. Okay, that's it with the uh, prerequisites. So let's actually start creating our project. So here in firebase.google.com, uh, let's go to our console by clicking go to console. And as our console loads, now we can create our project, click add project, and let's call this social ape. Cause that's what we all are at the end of the day, I guess. <laughs> Uh, select your region and country. I'm in the UK, so I'm going to select United Kingdom. Uh, select the server that is closest to you. To me, it's uh, Europe West. And hit I accept and create your project. This will now create a basic Firebase project with everything uh, initialized. Okay, now that it's done, we can click continue. Uh, first thing I want to do, let's go to functions. And once it loads, let's click get started, which gives us some instructions, tells us to install this package. Let's click continue and finish. We'll do this um, separately. Okay. Uh, let's go to our desktop or whatever, really. And I'm going to use the basic command line because it's interactive and not git bash. Uh, here, let's install that package. So npm install dash g firebase dash tools which will give us access to the uh, Firebase command line interface that will let us create our functions and deploy them to our application. And I'll be back once this is done installing. Okay, now that it's done installing, uh, by the way, you can just ignore this uh, message thing. It's not important. We can run Firebase login so that we can authenticate so that it would know who we are. And for me, it says I'm already logged in. For you, maybe it will just pop up a browser window and you just select your Google account. So here I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to create a directory called social ape dash functions. I'm going to cd into that. And here we're going to run Firebase init for initialize, which will create our project. We want to proceed, yes, and hit space on functions. And this is all that we're going to select for now as uh, from services. And here you choose from your projects, choose the project that we just created. It's going to ask us whether to use JavaScript or TypeScript. We're going to use JavaScript and ES Linton. I'm going to say no to this. And let's say yes to installing packages, which will now install all the dependencies uh, that we need. I'm trying to think like two or three dependencies. So I'll be back once this is done. Okay, now this, this is done. If you have Visual Studio Code, you can run the command code dot, which will open this in VS Code. And there we go. So this is what we get, a get ignore file and a Firebase config file that has our project ID. Uh, if we go to the folder functions to index.js, this is where our functions will sit. And as you can see, if we uncomment this, this is a basic hello world function that comes shipped with uh, Firebase. Let's change this, this text to say hello world. 
and oops, hello world. Let's open up the command line and let's run Firebase deploy. This will now deploy this function so that we can test it and see if everything is working fine. Funny that a hello world function didn't actually have hello world as the return. <laughs> okay, so now we will deploy our function to our uh, to our functions and it will give us an endpoint which we can call to see the response from that function. And if you're uh, by any means familiar with uh, Node, this, this syntax of request response and a callback uh, should be familiar to you. If not, we will work with it and you, you will get familiar with it. Okay, so now that our function is deployed, we get an endpoint right here. So let's copy this and let's open up um, Postman and let's see if this is working. Let's wait for Postman to open. Let's put these uh, side by side. So let's paste this and let's hit send. And indeed it says hello world. So we're up and running. Okay, let's do something a bit more complicated than that. Let's go to our project. Um, we're here, let's close these windows. Let's go to database and initialize our database. So we click create database and it asks us whether to start in locked mode or test mode, which these are like database access rules uh, that give us access to read or write some of the documents. For now, let's go in test mode, which will leave all resources open for everyone to edit, which is crazy, but we're not in production yet, so it's fine. Let's wait for it to set up everything. Now we can actually start creating some documents in our database. Uh, let's create the first collection, which will hold our posts, which are screams, if you remember. So screams is the collection name. And let's actually create our first uh, document. Uh, this will have a field uh, called user handle, which will determine, which will let us determine who, which user submitted this. Let's type user. And uh, now this user doesn't exist yet, but let's just roll with it for now. The body of the scream should say first scream R. I don't know. <laughs> And this will have a created add field. And this will be a timestamp. And uh, let's give it the date of today. And it was posted at midnight because why not? And now this will create our first screen. Let's actually create another one quickly here. So user handle again. And it's the same user. Nice and it's got the body field, this should say second scream. And let's add a created at field as timestamp and give it the date of the day. And let's say this was created at 1 a.m. So let's save. Now we have a database with a collection of screams with two documents in it. Uh, now let's try to Oops, yep. Let's try to actually fetch these posts from the database. So let's create another function. We'll call this exports.getScreams. And this will be from the function's namespace and from the HTTPS uh, area, I guess. And we will use on request. We will use some other handles, um, some other functions later, but for now we'll stick with on request. Oops. So this will be, uh, we'll take a request and a response. And these are arguments, so we can name them however we want. And our function now needs access to the database. Uh, we will be using something called the admin SDK. Um, we will import that by doing constant admin. We already have the package installed. Let's do require. As you notice here, we're not doing import from, this is not ES6 because this is uh, this is basically Node.js code. Let's do require Firebase admin. And to use the admin, we need to initialize our application. So we'll just do admin dot initialize app. And usually we would pass an application, but this project already knows that this is our ID of our application. So we just uh, do it like this. And now we have access to the admin uh, object. We can do admin 
dot firestore dot collection and now we give it the name of the collection that we want to access um, by the way all of this is in the documentation if you want to see quickly we can go to uh, firebase actually we can just google just duplicate this you can just google firebase uh, firestore and by the way, I really recommend uh, checking out the Firebase documentation. They're really, really comprehensive. So if we go to Fire Cloud Firestore and we go to read data, get data once. And let me change this for readability. And I believe, yeah, it's right here. So to get all documents in a collection, you run db.collection, which in this case is admin.firestore. And you give the name of the collection and you just run dot get, which returns the promise, which holds a query snapshot. And in that query snapshot, we have an array of documents. And I'll show you how we're going to fetch that, fetch those. But let's actually uh, maximize this. So the collection is screams. And let's do dot get. And then we do dot then. <laughs> and we have some data. And if you hover over here, you see that this Oops, this should not be any. It should give us a type. For some reason, it doesn't. Okay, let's just go with it for now. So we say data. Yeah, now it does. So this is a query snapshot uh, type, uh, which has a docs in it. So if you do data.docs, you'll see it has a property docs, which has an array of document snapshots, which are documents. So we can do uh, data dot for each document and we need to store them in something so let's initialize an array called screams which is an empty in, empty for now and here for each document we want to do screams dot push and we don't just do doc because this is just a reference we do doc dot data which is a function that returns the data that's inside the document and now this after this for loop this screen should be populated with the data of the screens that we have now we need to return them so let's do uh, return response dot uh, json to return it as a json object and let's do screams um, and let's put a colon and of course this returns a uh, a promise it will be good practice to catch any errors that might happen so we do catch error and if any error happens we just want to console it um, log it to the console using console error um, error like this now we hit save and now we can do firebase deploy again and this will deploy our function and we can test if it's actually working Okay, now that our function is deployed, we can actually uh, test it. So let's copy this endpoint and let's go to Postman. Let's make this bigger and let's paste our endpoint here and hit send. And this should bring up the documents that we just created and it does. So this is the first document, or rather this is the second document which says second scream and this is the first one which says first scream R. Perfect. So, so this is for getting documents. Let's create another function for actually creating documents. So let's do exports dot, um, let's call it this create scream. And, uh, we can actually just copy this like this and remove the code inside of it. And here, we're gonna get a request body because this should be a post request. So let's initialize our uh, screen. Let's call this new screen. And this will have a body of request. And our request will have a body. And don't get confused. This, this body is the body of the request. And we're gonna do dot body, which is a property in the body of the request. And this will make sense in a second. And the user handle will be request.body.user handle. And we need a created at. So it's the created at equals, um, I think this is admin.firestore.get. 
time st timestamp dot we'll use a function called from date which will create a timestamp from a normal JavaScript date object. So we do new date, we pass it a new date, and now we have our object, we need to persist it in our database. So let's do admin dot firestore dot um, collection and the same collection screams this time we're going to use a function called add which will take a json object and adds it add it to our database and the object in this case is our new scream object and this again returns a promise so we do dot then and this will give us uh, a document reference as a response which is actually which we're not going to do anything with this document reference so we need we can just do this because we're not going to do anything actually we are let's get that document reference now, if we are here, that means the document has been created, so we can return a response, a response.json, and this will have a message that will say, well, I'm going to put backticks because we're going to put a variable inside of here, and we'll say document, and let's do dollar sign curly braces to pass the ID of the document, which is a property in a document reference type, which we'll is do doc.id. And we need to say create, uh, we're going to say created successfully. Now, if there was an error, we can do catch error for some reason. We'll do uh, console dot, actually, let's return a response. So we'll do res, res dot json. And but actually, no, because there was an error, we need to change the status code. We shouldn't return the status code of 200 which means success. So let's do dot status and let's give a status code of 500 because this is a server error. And let's give a JSON object that will have a error prop, um, property or key. And this will say something um, went wrong. And let's actually console um, error it as well. Um, error. Okay, so let's save. Now we can run Firebase deploy and test it. There's nothing wrong with that, but deployment takes some time. We can instead run Firebase serve, which will serve our application locally, which is so much faster and will give us the ability to uh, save and then immediately serve again. And we don't have to deploy each time we make a change and we want to test. So now this is going to serve locally. A, using our machine as a server and give us the endpoints. So let's take the create screen endpoint. As you can see, it says localhost instead of the endpoint that we had earlier. And let's open up a new tab and let's test this. Let's change the type of the request to the po to a post request and let's give it a body. Um, we're going to click raw and select application slash JSON. And let's give this a body of a new screen and let's give this a user handle of um, let's say new and let's send the request and and it says document something something created successfully and if we go to our firebase database and we check I don't know why I clicked that it shows without us reloading and there we go our new screen is here and what's beautiful about this if we put them side by side and we say new screen 2 and we click send it updates in real time and we see oops we see new screen 2 fantastic now we shouldn't th there's a problem here which is that if i would send a get request to this uh, of course without a body it will say we have an error, like a server error, when actually this is not a server error, this is a client error. We shouldn't send a get request to a route that is meant for a post request. We can prevent this by doing uh, this. So we can say if request, oops, if request.method does not equal post, we should stop here and return a response. So res.status 
Uh, it's not going to be 500. This is going to be 400, which means this is a problem from the client. This is a bad request. And let's say send a JSON with an error that says method not allowed. Now this will solve the problem of uh, not having to answer to a get request. So if we go to Postman and if we click send, this time it will say method not allowed with an error code, uh, rather a status code of 400. So you can start to see how this is coming together and how we can send the request to fetch data, send request to persist data. And this is obviously just the start. We're going to have so much more. Uh, in next, in the next video, we're going to start to implement express to, so that we don't have to say this if request method on each request and we can group our requests and handle them so much better using express. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you're enjoying this and uh, I wish to see you or hope to see you in the next one. I don't know. I messed this up. It doesn't matter. See you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.